Welcome to this five minute horse lessons production. In these segments, we're going to talk about bits, bidding, and everything that goes on your horse's face that you will use to steer your horse. We'll talk about snaffle bits, we'll talk about tom thumb bits, we're going to talk about leverage bits, we'll talk about a bozal and a halter and a mechanical hackamore. First, we'll show you what these bits look like and how they're going to function in your horse's mouth, and then we're going to have some segments riding those same bits on a couple of small patterns. We'll serpentine around some cones, we'll do a small square and some circles so that you as the rider can know how those bits are going to work in your horse's mouth. The full cheek snaffle. When you're using the full cheek snaffle, if I'm putting a little bit of pressure on this side of my horse's mouth, if you have light hands and your horse understands what it is to move off of light pressure, she should move her head in this direction. If, however, I'm riding a young horse or a horse that does not understand light pressure, if I pull harder, then what's happening is that this side of the full cheek snaffle is really pushing against the side of her face because I'm pulling my rein. And so you get this push and pull action going on. So as I pull the rein on this side, the opposite side, it's pulling her face this way. As I pull this rein, this side of the snaffle bit is pressing against the side of her cheek and it is making her move over. The nice thing about the full cheek snaffle is because it bridges the full cheek, your horse is less likely to be able to evade that bit. If you're riding a young horse or a horse that is inexperienced being ridden with a bit, they will often try to evade the bit by gaping their mouth open. And the full cheek helps because it is very difficult for the bit to slide through your horse's mouth as they're trying to evade that bit. A chin strap, in this case, will not help to keep a snaffle bit from sliding through a horse's mouth. That is why, for the full cheek snaffle, it is my favorite bit, and I use it practically all the time, whether a horse needs it or not. It gives you the most support, and it provides the most safety that that bit will stay in your horse's mouth. As far as halt pressure, as you're asking your horse to halt or slow down, it should be rhythmic in nature so that you're saying slow down, slow down, slow down. You would prefer, of course, that your horse is not gaping its mouth if you're pulling so very hard. The way that you get a horse to understand that you're asking for halt pressure is to ask for that rhythmically. So it is a pull and then release, pull, release. You can get more firm, but try not to jerk on and off. Next, we'll talk about the D-ring snaffle. The full cheek snaffle while riding your horse. The full cheek snaffle is my favorite bit. It's my bit of choice. And if you watch the earlier segments, it is because it is the kindest and gentlest bit that your horse will understand. Whenever I'm riding young horses or unfamiliar horses, I prefer a full cheek snaffle because there is much less danger of that bit moving through my horse's mouth. Now, the pattern that we're going to use here to show what's going on uh, is just a little serpentine through some cones. And what I'm going to use is my blue rein here to bend her to my left. Now my orange rein to bend her body in the direction of the orange rein. And as I come through this next cone, I'm going to use my blue rein. I'll direct rein her saying, now I want you to bend your body and let your feet follow. Good girl. So there's my serpentine. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a small square. Again, I'm going to use my blue rein and say, I just want you to bend your nose and your neck and let your feet follow. And then I can straighten her ever so gently with my orange rein. Another thing that I am doing is I'm using my legs. So as I'm going to use my blue rein, I'm going to bump with my, the leg that's on the side that my blue rein is on. And this assists Katie in bending more properly. So as I use my blue rein, I'm bumping my left leg and I get a bend. Now as I am going to make a small circle here, again, I'm just going to use my blue rein and the function of this snaffle bit, the full cheek, is to assist with that direct reining. I'm going to go ahead and change direction. So I'm going to use my orange rein. You can see my the leg on the orange rein side, which is my right side, is also bumping her. And I'm telling her, look, I want you to bend around this leg. I'm not pushing it so hard that she moves away as like a yielding off of the leg, like so. Just enough to say, I want you to bend around that leg. As I approach my next cone, 
I'm going to, again, bump my right leg, use my orange rein, and let her just bend her body enough so that her feet follow her spine. And here again, leg, rein, and now blue rein, blue leg, and really it's leg and then rein. And now to straighten her, I'm going to go leg, 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 and if I need a little rein, I will. Good girl. I'm going to press her off. Oh, we missed that cone, and that's okay. So here we go. A little bit of rain, a little bit of leg. Now, with any snaffle bit, and we're going to show you all the snaffle bits, we're going to show you the D-ring, the egg butt, and also the O-ring, you have full use of each way to steer your horse. So I can direct rain, which is what I just did. I can also put my inside rein down, my indigo rein, and now steer just with my outside rein. And there are many segments that we have about using your inside and outside rein. And I can also now slide down my blue rein and ask Katie to disengage. So I'm really going to pull her nose around, watch that hind quarter kind of come through. Good girl. There it is. And I'm going to come out, straighten her a little bit, and then I could neck rein her as well with the snaffle bit. The importance of that knowledge with your snaffle bits is you lose the ability to steer with your, um, your direct rein and your disengage rein when you start going to the leverage bits. So when we get to the tom thumb and to the curb bits, we won't be able to do as much direct reining and your disengaging needs to be much more mindful. The next bit I'm going to grab is the D-ring snaffle. The D-ring snaffle is much more preferred by Western riders. Oftentimes they don't like to ride with a full cheek because they think that it's too much like dressage or English riding. And uh, to be honest, the D-ring will help a rider if they have work to do. For example, if I'm throwing a rope, the rope is much less likely to get caught on a D-ring than it is to get caught on a full cheek snaffle. And uh, so there are reasons why Western riders don't particularly like a full cheek snaffle. However, for the training, um, it's much more preferable than even this D-ring. The D-ring does not offer quite as much length on the side of the cheek. So this, even though this is quite a large D-ring, it can still slide through a horse's mouth if they're young and trying to evade the bit. And it works the very same way. If I can ask her to move her head over just with a little bit of pressure, she's going to feel it on the side of the mouth that you can see here. Good girl. If she tries to evade that pressure and I need to pull much more firmly, Again, even with the D-ring here, it's going to press this side of her face. And so even though I'm pulling this rein, what she's feeling is a push on this side of her face. And the opposite would hold true as well. If I want her to move in that direction, a little bit of pressure would say move a little bit. And if I need more or if I uh, feel as though I'm in danger, then she might buck or that she might take off. I would try to bend her and disengage her. This helps you to control your horse's head. Your snaffle bit is about bending your horse. It is about bending from side to side. Of course, here on the ground, I just have one rein. But if she doesn't understand light pressure, then she understands the heavy pressure because she cannot really get away from that. As I'm riding, I might also sort of bump my leg into her side and then use my rein at the same time to say, I am looking for bending pressure. Just to recap, your full cheek snaffle is going to have another inch on probably either side of this, which is going to help so that your horse cannot evade the bit by opening its mouth and having the bit slide through. This D-ring would be for a horse that I've already started then with uh, a full cheek snaffle and they seem to be doing well, they're not evading the bit and uh, it's safer for me if I've got work to do, especially with a rope or if I'm riding out in the woods, there's uh, not as much a chance that the D-ring is gonna get caught up in brush or, or uh, foliage. The D-ring snaffle on the ride. Next up, I've got my D-ring, and I'm going to do pretty much the same exercises. The difference between the D-ring snaffle bit and the full cheek snaffle is that the full cheek snaffle usually has about six inches of coverage on the side of your horse's face, and the D-ring is going to have somewhat less than that. Sometimes it may be as much as five or five and a half inches, and sometimes just a few inches. And if you remember from the discussion part, the non-riding part of these segments, that the more coverage that you had on the side of your horse's face, the easier it is for your horse to understand 
if you have to put a little pressure on that bit. So again, as I come through, I'm going to bump my leg and put just a little bit of pressure. But if I have to really haul and pull, then the danger is that my horse may gape their mouth and that bit may pull through their mouth. And a chin strap will not help you with your snaffle bits. The chin straps are meant to apply pressure on the underside of the jaw for your leverage bits. So here again, as I'm coming through, I have access with this bit to all of my steering techniques, my direct rein, my inside and outside rein, so I can lock my blue rein, and then steer with my orange rein. Good girl. I can come through, and I'm very gently now going to go ahead and disengage, being mindful that I do not have as much coverage on the outside of my horse's face. So I want to make sure that I got plenty of bend. I don't feel the disengage yet. I don't feel the disengage yet. Good girl. Good girl. And there it is. And you can see that she was complaining just a little bit more because with even the few inches less of leverage on the side of my horse's face, because I'm not using the full cheek, it's a little bit more painful to her. The D-ring is going to really poke into her gums and into the side of her face much more than the full cheek snaffle. So here again, I'm going to go ahead and change direction. I'm using quite a bit of leg to get my horse to bend. And uh, as I'm training her in the snaffle bits, I want her to start working off my leg because when I go to my leverage bits, that is when I need to start doing a lot more neck reining. So again, I'm in a direct rein. I'm increasing her bend and then asking her to feet to follow. And then when I get to my steering point, I change the bend, come back the other way. As I go around again, I'm going to direct rein. And as I come through, I'm going to just do a little slight disengage there and then straight back down. Good girl. So as I wrap up the D-ring, it's not that much different than your full cheek snaffle, but it's enough that your horse is going to notice the difference. It's more likely that your D-ring will pull through your horse's mouth than certainly the full cheek snaffle. The D-ring would be my second choice of a snaffle bit, and for most Western riders, it will be their first choice. Often Western riders think that the full cheek snaffle is a dressage thing or an English riding thing. Um, and the D-ring is also much safer, I would say, on the trail. Um, if you're throwing a rope off of a horse, it's less likely that it's going to get caught on the top of the prong. Next up will be the egg butt. The egg butt snaffle. Compared to the full cheek snaffle and the D-ring, which we just saw, this has very little coverage on the side of her face. And so as horses become more trained and lighter about all things horsemanship, especially when using your reins, then you need not have this heavy pressure on the outside of your horse's mouth. But if you ever are finding that you need to pull your horse around and that you disengage them, then this would not be a bit that you would want to be in. And uh, the reason here is because as I pull harder, instead of having all of this uh, length on the side of the horse's face, which is pushing the horse's head over, now what's happening is that there's just a little bit here, and it's, again, egg-shaped, and it's pressing directly into her gums, which hurts your horse a little bit more. And uh, so if your horse understands light pressure, then you would go ahead and start using either an egg butt, a snaffle bit, or an O-ring, which, again, are much less likely to get caught if I have work to do as a Western rider. The egg butt snaffle also does not need to have a chin strap, although oftentimes you will see people have a chin strap. Uh, sometimes they'll even uh, uh, hang a little shoe fly or something like this. Uh, but as far as keeping that bit from sliding through your horse's mouth, it will not help, unfortunately. Next, we'll take a look at the O-ring snaffle. The egg butt snaffle. And the egg butt snaffle is another one that uh, people like to use. Um, often you'll see it in uh, dressage riders, English riders. And even though it is still a snaffle bit, good girl, the, uh, 
the coverage on the side of your horse's face makes it much less effective than, say, your full cheek snaffle or your D-ring snaffle. And the idea here, again, is that as I direct rein, I'm tipping my horse's nose in the direction of travel, hoping the feet will follow. And, and then here again, right rein, right leg. And as I come to this cone here, it will be blue rein, blue leg, so leg, and then rein. And I'm going to make my square now. The idea is, of course, that you steer your horse, horse only when you need to. Leg, rein, saying bend your spine, let your feet follow. A little bit of leg with my uh, orange rein there. Straighten your spine so that you walk straight. Now I've kind of counterbent her just a little bit. And again, we're going to turn. And for these gentle little turns, there's not a lot of pressure on the side of her mouth. She's primarily going to feel the first little bit of bump, bump on the blue rein, and if I need to pull harder, then she's going to feel the outside of that bit press against her face. Here again, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a disengage now. So I'm going to bring her nose over. I'm really bumping with my inside leg. And again, as I'm pulling that a little bit harder, I'm still not quite getting my disengage. There you go, sort of. But this is a less effective communicating bit than my full cheek or my D-ring. And the idea as well would be that as you're moving to this type of bit, you're not needing to control your horse as much by using deep bending and disengaging, that your horse is relatively calm, that you've done enough groundwork and riding that you're no longer having white knuckled rides, that your horse isn't afraid of the wind and every little bag that's blowing. So as you progress in your horsemanship and that your horse progresses, then that's the time to go from your full cheek to your D-ring or to your, then to your egg butt, and then finally to your uh, O-ring snaffle, which again would be my least favorite. However, if you have a well-trained horse that really doesn't need much steering, as far as having to pull their head in the direction you want them to go. Again, Katie will pretty much move off of my leg when I say bend, bend. And again, I'm going to give just a little bit of a disengage, come back around. And the full cheek snaffle is, again, not a bit that I would choose to use with a young horse or a horse that really needed to be uh, shut down with deep bends and disengaging. But it is a snaffle bit. You don't get a lot of halt pressure. It's just one-to-one -one pressure there. And then uh, next we're going to show the O-ring snaffle, which will be my least favorite snaffle bit. The O-ring snaffle, which is, uh, tends to be my least favorite of the snaffle bits, compared to the full cheek snaffle, now there is practically no pressure on the side of your horse's face. So if you find that you still need to use your reins to steer your horse, especially to get a bend on, this is the least desirable bit to use because as you are pulling, your horse is feeling a bit of a pinch uh, on the side of their face or into their gums. And as your horse becomes softer in the mouth, that you can just give just the slightest bit of pressure, then you would move to this bit, this bit rather. So if I really pull on this bit, you can see how it's kind of starting to twist in her mouth there just a little bit and how that could go into her mouth. And there again lies the danger, even though it's a snaffle bit. Each snaffle bit has a slightly different use and a slightly different way that it's going to uh, react with your horse's mouth. So choose the right bit. For example, I may ride a horse in the arena with a D-ring but I know that maybe for the first five rides on the trail, I want to go back and use a full cheek snaffle. When they've proven to me on the trail that they are comfortable enough to go into a D-ring or even a, uh, an egg butt or an O-ring, then go ahead and upgrade to that sort of bit. But don't use the wrong bit for the uh, wrong situation. Good girl. Here again with your O-ring snaffle, uh, a chin strap will not help to keep that bit from sliding through your horse's mouth. 
as it pulls, sometimes the O will slide one way or the other and it can go through your horse's mouth, which makes it even more awkward to try to control your horse when your horse now really has something to fight in its mouth. Another reason that I'm not a big fan of the simple O-ring is that, especially this one right here, can pinch your horse uh, on the side of its lips as you're using the, uh, the bit. Although nowadays, oftentimes, O-ring snaffle bits come uh, with kind of lip guards um, or uh, they almost look like a, it's like a slight D-ring slash O-ring. So you can get away from the strict old-time O-ring. Next, we're going to talk about the Tom Thumb. The O-ring snaffle. And this is the old-style O-ring, which can pinch your horse in the side of the lip as you're using it, especially when you need to use it to really put a bend on your horse. I would again say that for your snaffle bits, the safest is your full cheek, next up would be your D-ring, then your egg butt, and then finally the O-ring. The O-ring really does have a tendency to twist if you're putting any uh, real pressure as you're pulling your horse in one direction. However, when you're riding and training your horse, I'm training my horse to move off of my leg and less off of the rein. That way when we get to the leverage bits and we go to neck reining, the horse already understands the bump bump of my leg. Good girl. Now as I come through and do my, uh, my square, I'm going to ask my horse to bend. I'm going to use my outside rein here and kind of use my inside outside rein. Again, I'm really bumping my blue leg right now. And uh, I'm going to come through, and I'm going to go ahead and disengage her again. And I expect that she's going to complain the most about this disengage with this O-ring snaffle. And I'm going to be pretty gentle about it, because I know that it's not going to give her the support that, good girl, there you almost, there you go. And then back around. <laughs> Good girl. And now changing the bend. So lots of leg here. Change your bend, sweetie. Let your feet follow your spine. A little bit of support up with my blue rein here so she doesn't twist. And again, lots of orange leg to say, hey, we are going to be turning to the right, going around this cone. Good girl. Now left rein, left leg to straighten her. And now left rein, left leg to say bend and let your feet follow your spine. Good girl. As I come around this last cone, good girl. Orange rein, orange leg. I'm going to just put a little bit of a disengage on there to get her to turn a little bit quickly. There we go. And back up the rail. The O-ring snaffle, again, especially one that pinches at the lips is one that I hear often students and people who want me to train horses will say, my horse does not like the bit. And my first question is, well, what bit are you using? And then how are you using your hands and steering your horse? Because sometimes the horse is really just reacting to miscommunication between the rider's hands and what they think that that bit is saying to the horse. Most people think that just pulling one rein or the other is going to steer that horse properly. But as you'll see in the next sections, when we're talking about leverage bits, there is no pulling your horse's head from side to side. It needs to be neck reining, which means both the rider and the horse need to have some experience with proper neck reining. Next up, leverage bits. Good girl, Katie. The Tom Thumb bit. Here now I have a, uh, a bit that's called the Tom Thumb, and it's a favorite of Western riders. And in this case, you're going to have a chin strap, which is going to be very useful for this bit. It looks like it's a snaffle bit, but it has leverage, meaning that the reins connect below where the actual snaffle is. And this is important because it changes the bit very much the way that, it's, uh, the way that it works. And we're going to give a short example here to show you how that bit works. Go ahead and put your hands again so that you're uh, you're mimicking what your horse is going to feel like or what your horse will feel. And now I'm going to ask first that Susan just pulls straight back to give me what the halt pressure feels like. And again, feel how that chin strap presses up against the side or the underside of your hand. Go ahead and give it a little bit more pressure. Good. And now, that's plenty of halt, 
I'm going to ask Susan to just pull the uh, orange rein as though she were direct reining. And again, what's going to happen here is that this twists in my hand, and instead of pulling me to the side, what it does is it twists the bit in your horse's mouth. So even though you think that you're saying, hey, turn to the left, your horse is really feeling that they should twist their head to the side and evade the pain that this bit is causing. So now you can see that when you're pulling the tom thumb, it does not act like a snaffle. So when you're pulling this, what happens is it presses against your horse's face and does not in fact ask them to move to the side. Oftentimes people think they're saying, hey look, I want you to bend this way, but instead what they're doing is they're making their horse uh, go into pain and they're pressing the head in the wrong direction. So the horse does not in fact understand what's going on. The tom thumb is used primarily for neck reining and uh, you get a little bit more halt pressure and it's not really even halt pressure as much as it is the head. You're asking the horse's head to become more vertical. And that's where this bit helps with your training. Now, in this case, the chin strap is going to come into play as I get my reins. And this is something that you'll test as well to see how tight your chin strap needs to be. As you pull your reins backwards, you're going to feel the chin strap pushing into the bottom of her face here, right underneath her jaw. So you can test to see how tight it needs to be. Normally you're going to have uh, enough space that, so that you can get just one finger in between and then give it a bit of a pull and see if you can feel that chin strap tightening up. And that is what's going to get your horse to start backing up or halting or really this bit is used to get your horse to put its head down a little bit more to get that vertical position. And you don't want to be harsh about it. There it goes. Good girl. A little bit more vertical, a little bit more vertical. So you would like for your horse to go vertical first and then go ahead and start backing up or halting. That is what this bit is for. But this bit again is used for neck reining. You no longer can direct rein or really disengage with this particular bit. What you need to be able to do is know enough about your leg use so that when you want to go off to the, my direction right, that I can pull slightly back, bump my leg, my horse bends, and then its feet will follow its spine. When I want to go to the opposite direction, I can pull slightly back, bump my left leg to say bend around this leg, and then my horse will bend its spine and its feet will follow its spine. But once you go to the Tom Snaffle, you lose this ability as a rider to pull your horse from side to side, because if you remember, the bit is going to twist in your horse's mouth and give a very false sense of what you think that you've asked for. So that is the disclaimer for the Tom Thumb bit is that it does not act like a true snaffle bit any longer because of the leverage. The Tom Thumb bit. When I'm riding with the Tom Thumb it's also very important to remember that even though it looks like a snaffle bit it does not act like a snaffle bit. You remember from the hand challenge that as I'm riding now, I need to really keep my hands together, doing a lot more neck reining and only the slightest little amount of direct reining. So as I'm coming through, I'm going to use one hand on my reins. I'm using my legs a whole lot more and then kind of releasing here, allowing her feet to follow. And now I'm going to use my legs on my orange side to get my change of bend and then lay that rein on her neck to get that neck rein. And if I need to just a little bit use that orange rein, not too hard. Because if I put any real leverage on it, it's going to twist in my horse's mouth and it's going to cause, again, miscommunication. This is the bit that I see the most problem with students and potential clients is when they say my horse just doesn't like the bit. This is the chosen bit and this is really sort of a medium uh, training bit where you're starting now to train your horse to neck rein and to deal with not only halt pressure but half halt pressure meaning putting your head vertical and that's where the tom thumb is so great now if I really have to disengage I'm going to very gently come straight back almost to the back of my saddle but just to my hip and you can see that I'm not going to get a great oh there's my disengage disengage but I'm putting some support on my orange rein as well so that that bit is going to be more or less stable in my horse's mouth. 
Here again, I'm going to ever so gently put that blue rein against my horse's neck. So my orange rein does not become as effective in getting my horse's bend. My leg says bend, my blue rein says now keep turning through that. Now I'm going to come straight back, which is going to allow her to start straightening a little bit. And now again, I'm going to come straight back, check my horse to get her to straighten, which puts a little bit of pressure on the orange rein. And then the blue rein again is going to take over once I have the proper bend. I'm going to neck rein, neck rein. And you can see I couldn't make as tight a circle there because this bit, the leverage bit, does not allow me to pull hard on my horse's face from side to side. So as I'm using this leverage bit, I'm going to use neck reining and the slightest little bit of direct rein. Anything more than that, any pressure out to the side or a big pull is going to twist that horse or twist the bit in my horse's mouth, which is going to cause this to happen rather than a turn and a lean into the direction of travel. So as you're using your snaffle bit, you must understand how your horse is going to react to it. And if you're using it violently with pressure, your horse is going to react violently. Next up, we're going to go with a regular curb bit. The leverage bit. Here I've got a, uh, will be considered a leverage bit. Um, you could also call it a bit of a curb bit. Well, this one has a port right here. This one has a port, which is going to press to the top of your horse's mouth. And uh, it will also use the uh, chin strap, as you can see here. And the leverage here uh, is along the side, so the reins attach down here. Now again, if it were a snaffle bit, the reins would attach to about right here, and this, the bit would move from side to side like so. But as soon as the reins attach down below, what you get is a twisting of the bit in the horse's mouth. That is why you need to be so very careful when you're choosing the bit for your horse. You want to make sure that you understand that when you pull this rein, you're not getting a bend, you're getting a twist of your horse's head. And it's very important, no matter which bit you put into your horse's mouth, that you understand how it's going to work. All too often I hear people say, my horse doesn't like bits, or you know, they, uh, every time I put a uh, bit in the horse's mouth, they just run right through it. And often people are using the wrong bits. They're using a tom thumb and uh, they should be using a full cheek snaffle. So this bit again can be very, very dangerous to the horse and to the rider if both are not accustomed to what's expected of that bit. Now Katie's set up in her port bit, which has quite a bit of leverage here that you can see. And she's really rolling the roller around in her mouth a lot. She's never had this port bit in her mouth. But it works very similar to the Tom Thumb in that it will have a chin strap. And you'll want to check to make sure that as you pull back, you can feel the chin, the chin strap pressing against the bottom of your horse's jaw. The port bit again is going to, uh, as your horse becomes more familiar with it, going to get your horse to start putting its head down so that your reins are doing less to ask for the vertical head position and that you're getting all of this leverage here too so that as you're pulling back for your halts and for your half halts you need to be very very light with your hands because that leverage can really cause your horse some pain. Now Katie is clearly not used to this sort of bit and the old California Vaqueros would take many, many years to get a horse to finally go into a bit like this and to work a horse like this. And it would have been the, one of the you know, finest hours of their horsemanship to be able to work cows uh, in a bit like this because it meant that the horse was so very well trained that they were able to listen to the rider and, uh, and not cause any damage to their own mouths. So as, as Katie would become a little bit more accustomed to this and not need to roll quite so much, then that would be time to go ahead and start working her, but it's not right now. The curb bit for the riding section. The curb bit is another leverage bit, just like the Tom Thumb. However, it is not broken in the middle. In the middle of the curb bit, there is a tongue re relief, and um, the higher that that tongue relief gets, um, it will be called a port bit. And in the, uh, the beginning of these segments, you saw that we used a, a port bit, had a little cricket in it. I will not ride Katie in that particular bit today, but this bit uh, 
that you can see here is just a normal curb bit. Here again, I need to do a lot of neck reining using my leg to get my bend, urging my horse to simply move its feet underneath its spine. Here, a little bit of orange rein to say we really are turning orange rein, but my blue leg or the leg that's on the side of my blue rein is the one that's saying bend around this leg, bend around this leg, and then I can neck rein, neck rein. And now if I come straight back, that's going to gently straighten her head, and I'm giving her a little bit of my blue leg now as well. Again, I'm going to make sure that she's bent properly, neck reining, neck reining. If I'm putting pressure on both sides of the bit equally, it will not twist. But here again, if I start pulling hard, I'm going to go ahead and ask for my disengage here, but it becomes somewhat more dangerous. I'm going to put a little bit more support on my orange rein. You can see that Katie here immediately put her head up and is complaining about this one because it's not pulling her head to the side. It's twisting her head in the opposite direction. So the more violent I get with this bit, the more that she is going to get upset and violent with me. I'm going to go ahead and again now lots of orange leg. See if I can get her to change direction here. Orange leg, orange leg, orange leg. And now blue rain, blue rain, good girl. Coming through, I'm pressing her off of my orange leg. Press, release, press, release. Good and durable. A little bit of blue leg to say that's far enough. Bend, neck rein, and now blue leg coming straight back towards my saddle horn to get her to straighten. And now blue leg, blue rein, but laying the orange rein on her neck for the neck rein. And now orange leg straight back with my hands to straighten her. And now a little bit of orange leg and blue rein. Good girl, neck reining through, neck reining through. Again, I'm not going to get a nice tight turn there. Here again, what you're getting with your leverage bits is halt pressure. And most importantly, what you're getting is head position. That little strap underneath the chin, the chin strap, is pressing against your horse's lower jaw, which is going to give you that vertical head position that you're looking for. The curb bit, again, is, is a transitional bit into a port bit if you, uh, if you want to start using that sort of bit. But it, is not, it does not give you any more control, especially if you don't understand how it works. And it's very important, again, that you're using this bit very wisely in your horse's mouth because too often I hear people say, my horse doesn't like bits, so I always ride them in a halter. Speaking of which, in the next segments, we're going to talk about riding in a halter. We're going to talk about riding in a bozal and in a mechanical hackamore as well. The halter or the rope hackamore. Now that we've discussed how the bits work, let's go ahead and talk about how a halter or a rope hackamore would work on your horse's face. It's nice to be able to ride with just a halter, but if you remember that when you are steering your horse, what you're looking for is to increase or decrease bend. So as we use the snaffle bits, especially the full cheek and the D-ring, if you remember, if you pulled here and it didn't get your horse to move over, then the leverage would push your horse's face over. And this is similar now with your halter, is if I put my hand here and I pull, the horse is going to feel pressure here, just like so, and I'm pulling her nose over. However, if you attach your reins down below where you would put your lead rope, the first thing that your horse is going to feel is kind of a twist of the halter like this, and then finally she's going to kind of feel something coming this way. And so when you're riding with a halter, your arms need to be a little bit farther out to the side because you want to engage your horse so that they feel pressure on the opposite side of the face. You must remember that there's kind of some slop here. And for me, riding with a halter means something like trying to fill out a check with a Crayola crayon. You can change where you put your reins Many times halters will have a ring on the side that you can connect to, or a lot of times I will go ahead and just place it around those two pieces right here so that as I pull, again, she's feeling that instantly on the other side of her face. Whereas now if I pull this one, it's going to twist the halter before it talks to her. And therein lies the difficulty with the halter. If you're going to direct drain your horse or try to disengage, you lose some of your steering power. So when you start riding with a halter, you want to make sure that your horse is doing some neck reining, that they understand halt pressure and backup pressure very well. You'll be using a little bit more leg to get your bend. 
but it gets a little sloppy when you start to steer. So again, you can see how the halter is like moving back and forth and it doesn't really mean anything to her. Whereas if I put my hand here and say, look, I really do mean to come this way, then that makes a little bit more sense to her. Now, again, she's not going to fight anything in her mouth because there is nothing there. And so you will need to make sure that if you really need to halt your horse or pull them around, that you're going to have to really use some strength to pull her over because the uh, halter is going to ride kind of where it needs to go. Now, sometimes people will say, oh, well, you just need to loosen this up so that it falls down on her nose like this. And that's where it needs to go. But now you've got slop up here. And the problem there is that, uh, you know, that can be a bit of a problem too. What's going on, Katie? And uh, so the dilemma then is, do you have too loose of a, a, a halter or a rope hackamore so that it's, you know, talking to the bridge of your horse's nose? Um, or of course you can tie your own so that it's, you know, the perfectly made halter. But again, riding with a halter, even though it seems very romantic, can be rife with some miscommunication depending on where your reins are attached and what you mean to say to your horse. The halter, or the rope hackamore, is uh, certainly a viable way to ride. Many times when people ride with just a halter, they'll go ahead and hook onto the loop at the bottom. The difficulty with this is when I pick up my blue rein and I pull it, the halter is going to twist on my horse's face before it actually tells my horse to turn. So to compensate for that, what I will often do is I will hook this not on the loop, but what I will do is hook it to the side of the halter, and then it's going to slide up as I pull, which is going to give really a direct sort of press against the opposite side of the face. And the same thing over here. Now, as I pull my rein, it's going to slide up, and then it's going to very directly pull her head in the direction that I need for it to go. Again, if it's hooked here, you get slop. And you need to be aware of that. People think that it's very romantic to ride in just a halter or the uh, rope hackamore. But you need to remember that as a horse person, you need to know exactly what your horse is feeling. And uh, so this is how I'm going to ride my uh, halter or rope hackamore uh, with the rein stuck here. Now, if you have a rope hackamore, it may be full on tied to this lower loop. And again, you must compensate for your steering the way that you use your hands when you're doing that. You may need to use more leg or be a little bit more gentle or be a little bit more patient with your horse if they don't understand exactly. So next is the riding part of that. Now that I'm going to ride in my halter or the rope hackamore, I am going to be able to go back and do pretty much everything again as far as the direct rein disengage. Uh, you lose a lot of your inside-outside rein compared to using, say, the snaffle bit. Um, but you also get to do a lot of neck reining as well. The other thing that you need to remember when you're riding with a rope halter or your rope hackamore is that your hands need to go farther out to the side in order to really communicate with your horse. And these sort of big flowing arm, arm movements out to the side start to develop into bad habits when people have bits in their horse's mouth. Because the bit is meant to be used directly in front of the rider. And that is why the snaffle bit has a little break in it, because it assists the rider to keep their hands in front of them. However, when you're using the halter, your hands are going to have to go out to the side a little bit more for your horse to actually feel pressure on the side of the face. Otherwise, what they feel is too much halt pressure. So even though if I were to steer her right now, as though I had a snaffle and I'm squeezing my left or my blue rein, she wants to halt because that's what she feels. If I put my hand to the side, good girl, she's going to say, oh, that's a turn. So I'm saying turn, turn. Now, if I'm going to try to disengage here, Again, I'm going to have to really take my hand out to the side to bend that head around. But you can see that she's not complaining in her mouth anymore. You can see that a couple of times with some of those bits, but she's also not really disengaging because I don't have as much control oh, of her mouth. Good girl. So as I come out and go to the opposite direction, again, I'm going to slide down, bring my hand to the outside and say, look, I do want you to bend and let your feet follow your spine. And now a little bit of left leg or blue leg. 
And again, my orange rain is going to go out to the side just a little bit. And it's sort of fun to do this, um, but you lose so much finesse with your hands as you're using these rope halters. And they are also a lot of fun to just ride your horse on the trail with just a halter because on the trail they don't need to do that much. They're kind of going straight, they need to stop a little bit. Um, but you don't have to use such a degree of control. But if your horse does not ride properly with bits, then they're not going to be that much more trained or happy about just being in a halter. It just takes the pressure out of their mouth and it makes the rider have to use a little bit more arm and shoulder strength in order to keep your horse in line. So even though people find riding with halters is sort of a romantic notion, uh, it is only romantic if you truly understand what your horse is going to make sense of when you're riding in that halter. Again, neck reining would be okay because you're really looking at halt and using your legs to change the bend of your horse. But if you have a horse that's somewhat out of control or young, I would not want to ride in a halter. The bozal. Here I have a bozal, which is really just sort of a stiff opening of a halter or the, uh, the rope hackamore. And this is going to fit around your horse's nose. It'll be go up and over. And then uh, this particular sort of bridle part of it uh, will loop around the ear. And then the reins are attached here. And then uh, as I put this on Katie, I'm going to attach an additional rope going from this knot up around by her ear so that it will stay in this position. Otherwise, it will have a tendency because there's so much weight of the reins that it will slip down. Um, although if you're just riding, you may be able to hold that up, but it's probably better to put that extra rope there. But this is what the Bozal looks like, and next I'll go ahead and put it on Katie. Like the halter and the rope hackamore, a Bozal is meant to fit around your horse's muzzle, and the reins connect here, and then I've also got just a, a little extra rope here to keep this from falling down. Now, if you always have control of your reins, that will not fall down. The difficulty, again, with the Bozal is that you cannot steer left and right-handed because if I pull one rein, this is going to twist on her face and cause her to go like this rather than like this. So as uh, you, some Bozals will have a small ring here so that, that if you are going to direct rein, it's very clear to your horse that there is pressure on this side of the face when I pull here. But if I'm pulling and the reins are attached down here, what's going to happen is that it's going to twist my horse's head in the wrong direction as I pull that left rein, which causes miscommunication between the rider and the horse. So as you're riding a Bozal, the idea would be that your horse is so well trained that they understand direct reining, they understand how to disengage, they understand inside and outside rein, they understand how to neck rein, because that's primarily what you're going to do here, is ride with one hand on your reins, use your legs to ask your horse to bend, and, uh, and then allow its feet to follow its spine. So what you're doing as a top-notch rider, as a top hand, is putting your horse in proper balance in order to do whatever work that you need to do. Now, as you're going down a trail, then this is perfectly reasonable. You don't need to do too much maneuvering. Uh, the other thing I don't particularly like about this one is that it's just a little bit close to her eye. So the design could you know, bring this back just a little bit more. Um, but it's very much the same concept as a rope halter uh, or the, uh, the rope hackamore. In the Bozal, you can see that it is uh, much thicker and built to uh, be a little bit more sturdy than riding with a rope halter or the uh, rope hackamore. Here again, I need to be careful with this particular rope was all and, and any because the rope and the reins are tied underneath and so if I give that a big pull it doesn't get my horse's head and neck to bend it twists it and so if I'm going to use any direct rein it needs to be pretty gentle just to the point where my horse understands that I'm saying hey I want you to bend but not twist so here again if I come here and give this a big pull Oh my gosh, that feels like a halt or a twist pressure in her face, and it doesn't feel like a turn. So as you start to use your halter and your bozal and your mechanical hackamore, you and your horse should have a pretty firm understanding of proper neck reining. 
Again, this particular DVD or these segments are not specifically to teach you how to know the difference between your direct rain, your disengaged rain, your inside and outside rains, but just to show an example of how these things work. So again, she's starting to, instead of turning as I'm asking, she's starting to take a little bit of offense to me starting to ask for a disengage. And again, the reason is because it's not as clear to her the way that the rein is attached to this thing. So I'm very gently saying, can you step your hind quarter under? It's not me just pulling harder. That's going to make it happen. It's her sorting out what I'm asking. Good girl. Walk her off. I'm going to ask her to change her bend. I'm going to bump my leg, my right leg, and then lay this rein on her neck, trying not to use too much of this rein anymore. Lay that rein on her neck. Good girl. And this particular Bozal also lays a little bit close to her eye. Um, and uh, it was just borrowed for the filming. Good girl. I'm going to come around again. I'm using neck reining techniques here. A lot of leg. Coming straight back with my hands rather than out to the side. Trying to be as clear a communicator I, as I can be with this particular horse and the different devices that I'm using to steer her. Pretty much the same patterns I've been going over each and every time, but the way that I steer her and the way that she understands what I'm asking changes with each device, whether it be the snaffle bits, the tom thumb, the leverage bit of the curb, the sort of freeness of the halter, and uh, and then a relative freeness of this Bozal. However, it's not nearly as free and it will not twist around your horse's face. So if I, again, if I pull this very hard, she's going to take a little bit more offense to it, whereas the, the halter itself is just sloppy. She's going to allow that to spin around her nose a little bit and then maybe react properly. This is going to demand something a little bit more quickly than a halter. So before you would go to this, you would want to make sure that you're riding with a halter and your, uh, or a rope hackamore. And then uh, the last option that we're going to show you is the mechanical hackamore. Good girl, Katie. The mechanical hackamore. It's dress up day for Katie. This time she has a mechanical hackamore on, which you can see is bitless and uh, it has leverage, you can see. What this does is it puts pressure on the, uh, on the point of your horse's nose. And again, I need to be careful not to grab this leverage and grab like so because that's going to twist my horse's head. So if I want to have any semblance of getting pressure on this side of her face, I need to make sure that it goes there. Now, this also will have a chin strap, which is slightly adjustable so that as you are pulling back on your reins, that chin strap should be adjusted so that you can just get your finger underneath it. But then when you pull back on your reins, you can feel it ever so gently pressing against the side or the uh, underside of her jaw right there. And uh, you, these usually are adjustable. And um, this then, as you're pulling back on your reins as well, is going to press on your horse's nose there, which is going to give you your halt pressure. Now again, you lose here because you've got this leverage and you don't really have the full cheek pressure or the snaffle bit pressure to pull your horse's head from side to side. You're talking about a lot of neck reining. And so you must understand that we're using the mechanical hackamore, that you're going to do a lot of neck reining, using your legs to get the bend, and then allowing your, horse, uh, your horse's feet to follow its spine. And uh, from the segments uh, about the five ways to steer your horse, you know, when you're using mechanical hackamore, you don't get to direct rein very much. Just the slightest little bit, maybe your horse will understand, hey, can you bring your head this way? Oh, you did it. Fantastic. But if I pull any harder, it's going to be a different sort of communication. Careful, sweetie. Now here I need to be careful too because as she's moving away, I can't yank her head back here. So you lose a lot of your power and you need to make up your loss of power for the finesse of how you're controlling your horse. Good girl, sweetie. This also, people will often think that this is nicer for a horse, but it is often not nicer, especially if you're pulling very hard. This is painful on your horse's nose. And... Um, so you get halt pressure, but you're not going to get much turning pressure. Also, if your horse is young or rambunctious or wants to take off, this is the, one of the least desirable ways that you're going to steer a horse. If you have horses that are 
rearing, taking off, bucking, you'd go, I personally would go back to a full cheek snaffle and really teach them what it's like to be disengaged so that when they start to act rambunctious, you go back to the tool that you need to fix it. Getting a bunch of halt pressure, really kind of cutting off your horse's airway is uh, not a great uh, training technique. However, you'll do what you need to do in the moment if this was what you happen to be riding. But the, uh, the setup is very much like a leverage bit um, in that you've got this chin strap and you've got your reins, but it will be much more of a neck reining technique with the mechanical hackamore. Riding with the mechanical hackamore. As I ask Katie to walk off here now with the mechanical hackamore, I again must realize that there is nothing in, her hor in, uh, in Katie's mouth here. It looks like a bridle with a band around her nose, which is going to give me a lot of halt pressure, but as far as side to side, it's not going to do much for me. So if you still need to steer a horse with a lot of direct reining, then this particular hackamore, the mechanical hackamore, is not going to help at all. This would again be for a horse that's ready to neck rein through life, that understands what bumping of the leg means, which means bend around my leg, or in this case, I'm going to bump my blue leg to straighten her and now bump it again. And if I pull on it, you see how she wants to throw her head up? Oh, because she doesn't understand that as a direct rein. So again, I'm going to very gently lay that orange rein on her neck saying that's what I wanted. And now a little bit of blue leg to say bend and now orange rein to neck rein to neck rein. So it's not that Katie doesn't like the mechanical hackamore. She's saying, hey, that doesn't steer exactly like a snaffle bit. It doesn't even steer like a bit with a little bit of leverage, which will give her at least a hint. What that does is sort of poke her in the side of the face and pull down on her nose. And so a lot of neck reining. What I've got here now is a, I don't have the option anymore to do much direct reining. I don't have the option of doing a disengage. Here we go, neck reining. She's kind of counter bent. So I'm bringing both hands back. And again, she had to kind of think her way through that because this feels very different to her than anything else that she's had on her face today. Good girl. And now blue rain, blue leg. Whoops. Good girl. And Katie has honestly n never ridden in this particular device before today. So she's trying to make sense of it. She's kind of counterbending through some of these turns. Let's see what happens here. My leg is saying bend. My blue rain is saying turn. My blue rain is saying turn. And if she doesn't, I just cannot, simply cannot pull on my orange rein. It upsets her a little bit, and she doesn't understand what it means. So as you are riding, again, you might say, look, my horse really doesn't like the mechanical hackamore. And they may not, because if you're not being kind and gentle with your hands, here I am saying, it's just moving off of the orange rein against your neck, then she can get upset. And if your horse is still prone to taking off or bucking, then you're at an extreme disadvantage because you have no way of controlling your horse with two hands or trying to pull her in. Everything is going to hurt her nose and confuse her. So as you're moving up your scale of which bit or which device you want to use with your horse, it not only hinges upon your knowledge, but, as, uh, but also on the way that your horse is going to react to those things. Here's a great exercise for you to go ahead and grab whichever bit you're going to use and place your hands forward like this and I'm going to place the bit between my thumb and my forefinger and on both sides so that you get a sense for what your horse feels in, the, in their mouth. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and have Susan right now very gently pull the orange rein and then I can feel that she's saying, hey look, you know, move this way just a little bit. Now I'm going to say go ahead and the blue rein just lightly and I can feel that I'm going to go to the blue side as well. And now back to the other side. And now I'm going to stop in the middle. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to really kind of plant myself and I'm going to be really stiff like a horse. And I'm going to say, go ahead and pull one way or the other. I don't care which way. And I'm not going to move until you make me move. And so now as she's pulling, again, what's happening is that it's pushing my hand over. And now I'm going to say, go the other way. And I want you to go ahead and give a really good pull on the blue, really pull it. And so I don't really have any control once she really pulls that rein. And she's not yanking it. It's just that the pressure of the bit against the side of your horse's face is making 
the bit go one way or the other. And that's the way that the snaffle works. You can also just go ahead and test by pulling back on both reins to feel what your horse will feel like when you're halting. And you know, feel that it's not that much pressure and certainly there's no chin strap there. And that's what the snaffle bit is uh, not used for is that you're not looking to have any contact on the chin. You're just working on the lateral movement with the snaffle bit. And now the tom thumb, what you'll want to do there is make sure that your hand threads around the chin strap so that you're going down underneath and go ahead and put your hands again so that you're, uh, you're mimicking what your horse is going to feel like or what your horse will feel. And now I'm going to ask first that Susan just pulls straight back to give me what the halt pressure feels like. And again, feel how that chin strap presses up against the side or the underside of your hand. Go ahead and give it a little bit more pressure. Good. And now, that's plenty of halt, I'm going to ask Susan to just pull the uh, orange rein as though she were direct reining. And again, what's going to happen here is that this twists in my hand, and instead of pulling me to the side, what it does is it twists the bit in your horse's mouth. So even though you think that you're saying, hey, turn to the left, your horse is really feeling that they should twist their head to the side and evade the pain that this bit is causing. So that when you're using this tom thumb, you cannot steer with two hands. You should be doing some neck reining. And if your horse feels just the gentle press of the rein against the neck, or you use your legs in order to also control your bend. But you must remember that any bit that has leverage, like the tom thumb, is going to twist when you start putting pressure on it. And lastly, I have the curb bit or the port bit here. And it'll be the same where I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that chin strap is behind my hand, that my thumbs and my forefingers are holding the bit as though it were in my horse's mouth. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and have Susan just give a little halt pressure, again, so that you can feel how that chin strap is acting upon your horse's lower jaw. And now with this bit, again, because you have the leverage, if Susan pulls the orange rein, what's going to happen is this bit twists in my hand, in your horse's mouth, rather than directly saying, I want you to turn like this, what happens is your horse gets twisted in the mouth. And that is why with this particular bit, a curb bit or a port bit, that you should be neck reining again. And that holds true for your halters, for your hackamores, for your bozals, all of those are meant to be steered really neck reining unless you have something attached directly to what's going through, this, through your horse's mouth. And again, when I hear people say that, you know, their horse doesn't like a bit or they don't like a certain bit, oftentimes it's because the rider is miscommunicating with your horse. So pick up each and everything that you're going to put in your horse's mouth, put it in your hands and have someone pull some reins so that you really feel what's going on with your horse. In conclusion, we've gone through now all of the different devices that you can use to steer your horse. We went through the full cheek snaffle, the D ring snaffle, the egg butt snaffle, the O ring snaffle. Then we talked about leverage bits starting with a tom thumb and your curb bit. And then we went to bitless devices, which would include your halter or your rope hackamore. We talked about the bozal and then finally the mechanical hackamore. All of these devices can be used to steer your horse, but they all hinge upon the rider understanding how they work in conjunction with your horse's face and mouth. There would be times where, for example, I may want to ride a horse in a snaffle and you know, eventually go to an O-ring, but if I were going to take them on the trail for the first time, I would go directly back into the full cheek because I know that each time that I up my horse's training level, whether it means going from the arena to the trail, they may need the additional support and you may as the rider to be able to shut your horse down again. So just because your horse does well in one device in the arena does not mean that that dev device will be the proper one to use on the trail. Hopefully this DVD showed you all of the tools and techniques that you're going to need when you are deciding which bit to use for your horse.